Yeah, but you got to put yourself out there first, right? Yeah, so, okay. you know, so we, it goes back to that. So yeah, put yourself out there. Put yourself out. You first, make that first step. Right. And then when to make that first step, people will start to see it. People like it. Then mm. you eventually get spread. The news will spread, and eventually people know, and then they'll come to you. And then one job you do will lead you to the next job, next thing, next thing, next thing. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's been a real long season, I know. This is the second last episode before we end season three of the Chris Hansen Conversation. Welcome back. Today, today's show is going to be a classy one. <laughs> um, I've got a class act with me right now in studio as my guest. It's going to be a very punny show. <laughs> I can see it already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dressed more decently than I used to, you know, for most of my other episodes, as you can see, because this classy guy is next to me and I know he'll come dressed away. And I was right. He came dressed in, a, in this print and with prints for sure. And I said, John's going to come in prints. Oh, really? You thought so? <laughs> How did you guess? <laughs> John Class, you see, that's why. I've got the man, the classy dude, John in studio today. Hey man, it's great to be here, Chris. Thank you so much for being here, man. This is my tribute, our tribute right. to you. Wow, yeah. okay. Um, I, I've said this a few times. I, sometimes I feel like a fucking parrot. Um, <laughs> I've said this a few times uh, right. to, to guests of mine who are not, who are well, basically, mainly, primarily, would you say your job is as a radio personality? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, really? Then what would you say? <laughs> I consider myself a singer songwriter. That's basically. Uh, oh, I've really? I've always considered myself that. All, and I've not done radio for as long as I've done music. Actually, I though I know a lot of people, you know, hear me on radio more. Yeah. Uh, as a you know presenter, right? Yeah. Uh, but I was away for fifteen years. I started off uh, maybe in nineteen ninety one as a radio presenter. That's mm -hmm. how we started off. Mm -hmm. uh, because I had no way into the music industry at that point. Okay. So I come out of the army, right? And then in those days, we had nothing else. There was no polytechnic. There was no you know, way to, to do broadcasting. There was no way to you do mean film. There were, there were polytechnics, but there were Not no doing courses. Those courses, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right. So polys were kind of relatively new at that point as well, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, what do I do? So I thought, first thing I'm going to do right after pre U, uh, go to go to go to army, just get myself into army, get that over and done with. Right. So I did that, and after army, what next? So I spent one year in my auntie's. Uh, she she gave me a little room in a in a, in a place to have my music equipment. I had all the band equipment there. I had my four track machine trying to write songs, which I was, I was writing songs, just trying to get the songs arranged and, you know, into a demo tape that I could send someone. Okay. Had no idea who I could send it to at that point as well, because record labels here, you know, they were not really, you know, promoting local acts at that point. Really? Yeah, not at that point. So, uh, I, anyway, I just, for one year, I was doing that. And while I was doing that, I was, I was making some extra money, you know, getting into those uh, sort of, uh, costumes of bears, Mickey Mouse, you know, that stuff to go to parties and entertain children. So, Ma mascots. Mascots, that's the word. Yeah, that's mascots. That's the word, yeah. <laughs> oh God, you were doing that? Yeah, I was doing that, right? Oh crap. For about a year, <laughs> just just to earn some extra, you know, cash to go and yeah, you know, yeah. live a life while Did I was doing that. Did you have fun doing that? I had lots of fun doing that, yeah. I must say. I was in Orchard Road once and I, I re <laughs> forgot that I was actually in this in this mascot outfit, right? And I was near a mall during Christmas season, I think it was, and uh, there were a lot of people walking by and I saw Tandip Singh, which, you know, <laughs> a friend from St. Patrick's, right? So obviously I saw him and say, hey, Tandip, right? And then he looked at me like, who? He started running along, say, hey, Tandip, it's me. Then, of course, I didn't realize because he had no idea who I was, right? <laughs> what were you wearing? Do you remember? I was Mickey Mouse or one of those. And then, you know, he, then Tandip Singh. <laughs> So Mickey Mouse coming to coming to him, and he was approaching him, and and Mickey Mouse knew his name. <laughs> he was horrified that Mickey Mouse knew his name, calling out to him in Orchard Road, and he ran away. Literally, he just hastened his his speed, and then he just ran away from me. Right, well, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I'm wearing this. Right, so uh, yeah, so I was doing that uh, one year, and then. Uh, very interestingly, I had a you know girlfriend at that point, and she had a rediffusion you know, set at home. Yeah, yeah. So I used to go to a place and used to hear, you know, Rediffusion playing. Fantastic, man, Rediffusion. Yeah, and then she told me one day, so, you know, the the rec this radio station is looking for DJs for an hour, you know, it's called Listeners Take Over. Right, right. right. And I think you you should go and do this, right? And I was like, no, me in radio, I never thought of radio at all before mm. as an option of something I would do, right? I said, no, nah, I don't think I have it. I don't think I, I can. 
And she said, well, I think you have the ability to do it. I think you have the voice for it. Right. Go for it. I was like, nah. You know, I just left it alone. But what little did I know that mm. she actually wrote into the radio station saying that I would like to be a part of the show, right? Called Listener's Takeover. For the I'm sorry to stop you there, but, but for the benefit of our listening audience, yeah. our viewing audience as well, um, Rediffusion is something we had in Singapore. It's a, it's a box. It's a, a, a box where you only have a few channels to, ch to tune to yeah. and a volume button. It was cable radio. radio. That's right. You it, actually it, had to pay for it. Yeah. You had to pay <laughs> subscription for it because it's cable radio. It doesn't come off the airwaves. There's no bandwidth to yeah. it. It's no yeah. FM or a a AM. But, yeah. it, but they had fantastic stuff, man. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, I thought at that point, cutting edge, a lot of cutting edge yeah, stuff yeah. came up awesome. from Fusion. Awesome DJs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I had a call one day uh, and it was someone from Rediffusion Fusion saying, okay, we received your, your letter mm -hmm. and I uh, would like to get you in for, for a show, right? Right, right? I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I have no idea about the latest songs. You know, I loved oldies right. at that point. I used to yeah. sing a lot of oldies. And I said, okay. And then we fixed the date. I immediately called my friend, uh, St. Pat's good friend of mine, Raymond Francis. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he was into that stuff, the latest music. He always used to, you know, act like a DJ as well. He re reviews those. He's a journalist, isn't he? He was a journalist. Uh -huh. Now he's doing a PR, if I'm not mistaken. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so anyway, uh, so I said, give me 10 songs, latest songs, uh, give me some information on it because we did not have the internet at that point, right? So <laughs> you had to go to the library or, you know, look yeah. up books to find out that yeah, information. Yeah. Yeah. And he used to, you know, read Smash Hits and Number One Magazines. And number One he, Magazines, He bought yeah. that all, all the time. So he knew all, all the information at the tip of his fingers, fingers right? Yeah. So he gave me all that information, one to 10, uh, Losing My Religion, all those songs at uh -huh. that point. Uh, and so I just sent it to them and said, okay, these are the songs I'm going to do. So they had to get the records for it. Right. So finally, when we uh, you know, did the recording, I uh, did the show. I was just regurgitating everything that Raymond <laughs> sent me. <laughs> uh, so happened at that point as well, that was um, someone in Rediffusion was leaving. One of the G DJs was leaving to go to Canada. So there was going to be a spot open. But right. didn't it happen to be uh, May Cecilia? May Cecilia? No, 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 no Cecilia. No, no, it was not no. Cecilia. Okay. It was, I forgot her name at this point. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, one of the DJs. And uh, so happened was uh, after I did that show, uh -huh. Uh, someone came up to me and said, oh, uh, our, our program um, director, Juanita Melson, would love to oh, speak to you, right? Juanita Melson. Yeah. So I said, oh, about what? And she said, oh, well, you know, just go ahead and have a chat with her. So she sort of offered me the job. said, oh, well, I heard, you know, that uh, what you did was good mm -hmm. and we have a spot. Would you be interested? And of course, like, what? Really? I had not thought about radio at all. You know, this thing came because my girlfriend had submitted, you know, this, this uh, letter of mine. Well, she did you a big favor, man. Sorry? She did you a She did me. I recently, you know, kind of thanked her again when she she reached out to me on, on uh, uh, Facebook. I said, you know, she because she came back, she's living overseas, but she came back, she heard me on radio. She said, John, you sound great. I, you know, I'm really excited and happy that you're doing this. I said, it's because of you, man. You know, all those years ago, yeah, I'm yeah. doing this right now, right? Yeah. So anyway, so I got the job and then one thing led to another. Um, because I got into the industry, you know, so-called... Uh, my boss one day, I was telling her about how I, I have a band, there's three of us, and we were working towards a demo. Mm -hmm. And she said, hey, I, I so, hap so happened to know the uh, managing director of Pony Canyon, right? Mm -hmm. Which was a record label. At that point, it was set up to to find local acts. Yeah. And she says, you know, he owes me a favor. Would you, uh, you know, want me to arrange for a meeting with him mm -hmm. so you can show him your demo? I said, well, that'll be fantastic. So I told my, my two other guys uh, from Kick at that point, uh, I said, okay, you know, we have this opportunity. Let's do a demo of five songs. Did the demo of five songs. Uh, before you know it, we got signed on. And, you know, the rest is history. We made that, you know, the two songs became a so huge So it was hit. because of your tenure at Rediffusion that Kick, your band Kick. Got the shot. Got actually, a shot. Yeah, as a recording artist. Yeah, it's wow. one thing leads to another, right? Wow, so you wow, just, wow. They always say, just look out for for the signs. You know, the doors open, take, go through the door. Yeah. One thing leads to another, and wow. this was actually what happened for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. What a story, man! What a story. So, since you wear so many hats, you say when people ask you, "So, John, what do you do?" Correct me if I'm wrong. If I read this wrong, huh? what you said earlier on, yeah, um, songwriter, singer, songwriter. That's yeah. what you would say. Yeah, I, I usually start off with that. And I said, well, you know, you may have heard me on radio as well. <laughs> you may have heard me on radio. <laughs> you kidding me, man? <laughs> okay, so with these hats that you wear, let me just confirm this. Radio DJ, singer, songwriter, performer. Yeah. Which one could be a no-brainer question, but 
Let's start small. Which one brought you the most joy? Well, absolutely. Uh, obviously, it's going to be singing, performing, right? Uh, uh, that's that's the thing that always brings me. Uh, that's why I always look at that being the thing I want to eventually, you know, sort of. And I say eventually because I feel I've not really achieved what I, you know, as a singer songwriter, have achieved yet, right? Mm. What do you want to achieve? I want to achieve uh, a, a number one hit song in the U- U.S. charts, wow. Billboard charts. Right? I've just I've just finished my album by the way so i'm really excited oh, wow. about that i've sent out my final song for for mix uh so that's going to be released in the next few months well congratulations and thank you and and that's uh, i think i'm really proud of this album because i think everything i wanted to you know kind of do or say in my music is finally done in this album because previously i used to do songs uh you know for projects all right i wrote for the movie soundtrack mm-hmm. teenage textbook was mainly for that project so the sound and everything was you know in line with that this time right it took me a long it took me years it took me decades to figure out who is john class as an artist right, right. if i want to record my own music just for myself mm. release an album which i never got to do until right now an album full of the songs that just represent me as an artist so right? these so, are originals right you wrote originals them. yeah absolutely yeah so, so what, kind of, what, what genre would that be in yeah, so that's the other thing. I, I, I well, it's always going to be pop music because mm-hmm. you know that's what I love, commercial music. Right. And because I was also always in radio, I can identify hooks and, and all that stuff. And and so I always tend to write those kind of songs, mm-hmm. which is radio, you know, type songs, right? Right. Right. Uh, so what I did was uh, in twenty twenty, I started uh, putting out some songs. I, I did an EP of three songs. And uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, radio station Class 95 allowed me to actually, you know, put those songs on air as well. And from there, I could kind of gauge listeners' uh, kind of uh, response, response to what they liked, right? right. Mm. So one was a ballad, and then another one was uh, a kick uh, reboot of Jane, which was mm-hmm. still a big hit song. Yeah. And then the third one was uh, sort of a, a new song, which was, um, uh, we call that sort of a... a, a, a a little bit of throwback, a little bit of a modern sort of sound. It's okay. called ballad. Uh, and yeah. uh, people responded to that the most, right? And so I said, okay, I'm going to go in that direction. So for the rest of the album, I, I kind of did, you know. Ballads. Not ballads as in a ballad. The, the song's called Ballad. <laughs> okay. uh, but it's, it's, the, it's the way it's done, right? So it's a little bit of a throwback sort of sound, but uh, with a new uh, sort of uh, sensibility as well, a new sound, you know, sensibility. So when the- music is concerned, specifically music. Yeah. Now that I know the story, how you actually en- end up be, uh, on the airways as a DJ. Yeah. Um, specific to music. I, I mean, we've known each other a long time. Yeah, in school. Yeah, <laughs> back in school, man. I, I, let me tell you my, let me tell you my, my impression. All right. The f- though yeah. we knew each other in, uh, from school, yeah. or from the school days, early, early years, I, on- I only started taking notice of you because you sang on stage. Yeah. Talent time. Talent time, right? I think I was sitting on stage as well for that one. Can't remember it though, but anyway. Yeah. And I was so impressed, man. Really? Wow, cool. I was so impressed. And that was when I called you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Called you up and I was so impressed by your singing. And I said, you know, we got to get into a band. Yeah. Right? And I think we did for a bit. The uh, first band I ever, you know, I <laughs> had was with Chris Henson, man. <laughs> and, and really, was that really the first band? Yeah, you know, no one else thought of asking me to be in a band before that. So. Do you remember that Sean DeMello was also with us? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's right. So yeah. Sean DeMello, you, me, a Thai guy named Apivat. Apivat, 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 Apivat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, and and uh, we had a drummer, Elvin. And a keyboardist as well. Yeah, remember, yeah. yeah. A keyboardist was... Jeez, I forgot his name. You 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 wrote him in, so he was your friend. But I, uh, Erwin, Erwin, yeah, yeah, Erwin, Erwin, Erwin. 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 All right, yeah, he's he's he became a pro piano pianist. Oh yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, I could, yeah could this guy was it, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was quite a good band actually for as long as it lasted. Yeah. We never got any gigs though. But then again, you know, it was quite fun. But, well, in school, and yeah, you we know, were something, in school, yeah, 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 and and it was just fun to do. Huh? Yeah, but it was it it was then at that time that it I really it perked me up. I went, oh wow, right. And really, man. I mean, I, I was quite blown away, you know. Right. Um, thanks, and thanks I'm to say. thank no, <laughs> hey, no worries. As I said last week, oh, last the last, I can't say last week. Among the tributes uh, that I've given for this season, uh, Aliyah Sharma, Aliyah D. Yeah, uh, she was here. Right. Yeah. Uh, in my studio, we sang. Yeah. All right. Okay. And um, and I said this to I'm going to say this to you, man. I you know, I will not, and I do not give tribute. So easily. Right. Okay. To just about anyone. Right. Yeah. 
and uh, you're here <laughs> in the studio. And this is our tribute to you. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate music that, in Singapore. Yeah, yeah. And I really, really hope your dream comes true, man. Well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that too before I go. Yeah, <laughs> one thing I need, to, one last thing. I, I really one feel one of the bucket list. I really feel that this is the final thing I need to get done in my life because everything else, more or less, I'm, I'm you know, family life has always been the most important for me. Yeah, yeah. Having a you know a really good family that uh, you know I can really enjoy being you know part of. I think that I've done that. I'm really proud of that as you know, mm -hmm. you know, as a person. And the next thing is going to be this, you yeah. know, with, with what I've done radio as well, I'm really, you know, also really proud of some of the stuff I've managed to achieve, but now it's the music, right? So yeah. that's the final thing. I've got the next 30 years to do so. So <laughs> Whoa, 30 years, man. Yeah. I'm giving myself 30 years to enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're looking at life from that perspective. 30 years, man. You know, I saw, <laughs> I saw, um, Paul Anker at 82 years oh, old just uh, last year, early last year. Uh -huh. And I was wondering before I went in, I was like, would he be able to sing and yeah, you know, yeah, dance yeah. and have that same voice? How and do you do? Fantastic. He, he, he was there for two hours and he did four or five encore songs and he was jumping and, and doing leg lifts on, at the encores, right? So that shows you at 82, you can still. Wow. Be the top of your game, singing, performing to a, you know, a global audience, right? Not so that we're talking about someone that, 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 I mean, it's an inspiration to everyone who saw him perform like you, right? Yeah. Paul Anker. Some of the people, who are some of the people who've influenced you, your music? Well, George Michael, big influence, you know, early No, days. I was thinking some, anyone closer to home. So anyone at all, maybe family or friends. Or oh, right. You you who really influenced you or even mentored you. Was there anyone like that? No, not, not in, musically. No, that's, that's, uh, yeah. I've never had a sort of mentor. Holy shit. You mean you've been going on your own all this yeah, while? Yeah. Yeah. I've always been going on my own. I found out <laughs> everything on my own. I bought books on singing on my own as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then discovery, right. As you do it, the good thing about it is that uh, you're doing it on the job as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, in radio, you get to learn how to use your voice every single day. Yeah. You're on radio. You're yeah. always doing something different, yeah, yeah. learning something new, right. Yeah. With how you use your voice mm. and with singing as well. And now I also do this, uh, you know, sort of Facebook live, you know, once a week now, I get to sing as well. So that helps, you know, in, because every time you do something, you just understand it better and you get better at it. You're as well. sharpening your hands. Yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. So uh, tweaking and then reading about things. Uh, and now there's so many resources on YouTube about, you know, different various singers giving you tips and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you're just watching those things and taking in and trying it out. And then whatever works for you, you keep. And whatever doesn't, you just throw it away, right? Interestingly, you said George Michael, man. Yeah, George Michael, yeah. Okay, what about George Michael? George Michael, I think he's the... A fantastic singer songwriter, right? Yeah, it's great yeah. songs. He knows oh, how to yeah. write great pop songs. Yeah, uh, he has this sort of quality in his voice. He knows how to deliver the songs. So I've always, you know, I, I listened to every everything he did. Uh, Duran Duran was a big influence in terms of uh, music ar arrangement. The Beatles as well, obviously. I used to listen just to for, to hear how they arrange the music and you know what made it so wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, more recently, because I'm getting an age. <laughs> yeah. uh, my role models, I must say, are like uh, Tom Jones, you know, the older guys who have proven that age is just a number. Yeah. Voice is still there. Even and Tony Bennett, don't you think? Well, Tony Bennett. Before yeah. he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, these guys were still doing it, right? Yeah, they were still doing Top it. Top of their game as yeah. well. Their voice did not deteriorate. They did not allow their voices to deteriorate. Uh, they still could perform their performance. So, yeah, I, you know, these days I find myself giving myself that okay, you know, you're not, you're not too old. You can still do this because a lot of people will tell you, yeah, you, you're this age, you know, forget that dream, man. Go, you know. But don't you think realistic. that as vocalist, man, you lose something? Not at all. I used to think that. Uh, I'm, I've personally felt I've gotten better as a vocalist. Mm. Uh, you know, I've just recorded, you know, my, my 10 songs for the album. And I'm listening back. I, I sound a whole lot better now than I did in my youth, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and that's because of understanding, you know, the, the more you go and the more you put into your craft, the better you get at mm. it. Once you stop, that's when everything, you know, deteriorates. Mm, maybe this yeah. sounds, sounds a lot like me. <laughs> so never <laughs> stop, right? Just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me <clears throat> personally, um, I realized of late, I can't do some of the stuff I used to be able to do in my youth. Yeah. And that's just because you've not tapped into those areas for a long time. Is it? That's what I've learned, right? Mm. Uh, I think I've lost it you know, completely. No, no, you've not. You've not. Believe me. Uh, you know, it's um, it's a matter of just going back into that space. Uh, if, when it comes to 
vocals, it's also a lot of times you're not tapping into various uh, sort of range. Vocal strands, your vocal yeah, strands. Your range as well. Yeah. You're not going into that range, which yeah. you used to before. Yeah. And then also what you've learned about your voice could have changed the way you're actually using it right now as well in singing, right? So singing and speech, two different things as yeah, well. Yeah, you use yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, all those things, It's I'm fortunate because I get to do this every day, right? And that's why I still do what I do because yeah. it keeps me you know, on my toes. It keeps me doing uh, you know what I do with my voice yeah. because it, it leads to other things as well. So yeah. now that you're now that you've got this bucket list, to, there's this one item on the bucket list you need to check off, right? yeah, and, and that have a hit in the US. Have is there anything else? For example, any collaboration of anyone you've always hoped to work with but haven't had the chance to pursue <sighs> collaboration at this point. Uh, I, I love working with with the various artists, so that's uh, you know. Uh, anybody, a dream collaboration. No, right now, I would have said it was George Michael, but that's obviously <laughs> now too late. <laughs> Kermit yeah. the Frog, though, I wouldn't mind. He's one of my role models, by the way. <laughs> Kermit and, and Mickey Mouse, my role models growing up. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Over the Rainbow. The Over the Rainbow. I still sing that song. In fact, we still play that in gold as well. Every time we play it, I was like, oh, yes. The Kermit version. The Kermit version, man. Yes. <laughs> Sitting on a water lily Why and a banjo. There's so many songs <laughs> about rainbows. <laughs> What's on the other? side <laughs> <laughs> tell me about kick all right you know those those are the years uh where i haven't really been in touch with you all right yeah you know the years when you had the band and and jane was out you yeah. know of course i of course obviously you're out there in the public sphere i see but this is what john is doing john's up to right he's got this band kick right he's got this song it's a pretty nice song though you know that uh, at that time right and, yeah but i don't know the story behind kick right okay how did it happen all right, so like I said, so I was in the army at that point, and in the army, I did a lot of singing there as well because our CO loved music. So I was attached to this uh, Sing Singapore sort of division in, okay. in this particular army. So that's basically what I did during my NS days, right? You didn't end up in, in, in music and drama company. I, I did so only during reservists, uh -huh. and that's another story altogether. But I was reservice. doing yeah, reservists, uh, you know, ended up doing music and drama. So usually it's the other way around. Yeah, usually it's the other way around, right? So, uh, so anyway, so. Uh, so uh, right after I ROD, mm -hmm. uh, we I used to say I used to sing a lot. So uh, this band from the army who were regulars uh, had a gig to do for one of the army, you know, sort of um, D and Ds, right? Right, right, at a hotel. So they had a band together, and they said, "Hey, John, would you want to come and sing with us?" Right? Because yeah. I just ROD. I said, "Yeah, okay, why not?" Right? Mm -hmm. Great. So we did. Uh, we went out and and did this one show. And uh, right after the show, we had a few of these guys saying, hey, we want to form a band and uh, to record music and, you know, do all that stuff, right? Uh, form a band mainly. So, but I always wanted to do write original songs, sing original songs. Right. So there were two or three guys uh, who were interested. And then we put out an ad on Big O Magazine. Remember Big O Magazine? Yeah, 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 yeah. Big O. So Big O Magazine put out an ad. We were looking for a keyboardist, guitarist. Uh, and we already had a drummer and, and stuff. Um, so anyway, um, s a few guys responded to this ad and we said, okay, let's, let's do a rehearsal, you know, and, and let's get together. Right. Mm -hmm. So the keyboard, said, well, I know I've got a, a, a space in my home where we, I have a whole band equipment thing, you know, why not you come over? Right. So we went over to this guy's place. Uh, I met up. So only four of us turned up. So it's myself. Uh, this guitarist that I met from from this army band, and mm -hmm. then these two other guys who were new joiners, right, from Rico right. Magazine. Right. And uh, while we we're jamming, everybody was saying, you know, I wrote this song, and then we we're all jamming our own songs. Hey, I got this song, I got this song. Everybody was listening to each other's songs. And uh, then we all got excited about, you know, wow, yeah, this sounds great. We could do this, we can do that. All of a sudden, while we'd, you know, the three of us were talking about these songs, the, the, the guy, the guitarist who was from the army band slowly just packed his things and walked away. He said, well, I'm not really into original music. I like to play covers, right? Right. So he walked off and he was left with Jai, myself, Dinesh, which was kick. <laughs> and then we realized that we both all shared, actually all three of us shared that passion for writing a version of music and, and recording, right? right? And right. that's how kick actually started out. Okay. And then I told you the rest, how we got into, you know, meeting with the record label and everything. So... Yeah, so once we got that uh, recorded, we spent one month in the studio. We got once we got our record deal, which was incredible as well. We went to the to the office, and on that afternoon itself, we got signed. Mm -hmm. Right, he heard our, the, the the MD heard our, our, our songs, and he said, "Okay, you guys, 
uh, let's let's put this on paper, right? And it's like, what the hell is this <laughs> happening? Like immediately, cr crazy fast, right? <laughs> so we signed it, and within the afternoon, I came out. I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm a recording artist, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was sometime uh, when we got, we signed on. I think it was August, and then mm -hmm. in December we went. We block booked the whole st the studio. Form records, uh, the, the record company blo blocked it off, mm -hmm. and uh, we recorded the whole album in a month. Right, we got this uh, producer co-produced co it from Australia, and uh, first single we released uh, on on a, on a compilation. Just to put it out there was Freedom, which is a song I wrote, and it got radio airplay. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, that did pretty good. And then the, the, when we released the album, they put out Jane, and that's when it just you know took off. Radio picked up on it. Actually, and that one radio really helped. In a great in a yeah, great way because yeah. 90, uh, sorry perfect ten at that point they were playing it like nonstop almost once every hour right yeah yeah, yeah. so when we started to perform in uh, like in 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 malls you know doing our promotion shows mm -hmm. people had come up to us and says I had no idea that it was a local band doing that song right we, I love that song so much I had no idea it was a local band right mm -hmm. so that was basically the sort of strategy the record label was taking yeah. not to put it out so much that it was local band it was just music in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, before you knew it, you know, it took off in, in that, that sort of way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then Kick went on for how long? Not too long. Uh, so it ended off as quickly as it came about. <laughs> uh, so, what happened? What happened? Yeah. So, you know, by the time we had released that album, we did a few shows. We did uh, huge shows in KL and 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 in uh, in J uh, sorry was it Malacca mm -hmm. really really like forty thousand six thousand people turned up for those shows wow. yeah. yeah it's one of those shows that they have wow in, in uh, they they use the car parks you know of these malls to to do the shows which is fantastic uh, Christmas Eve New Year's Eve uh, and and it was well received so the record label says okay we're gonna send you to to uh, London to record your next album right with uh -huh. with a producer uh -huh. that we chose uh, and we actually Jai and myself actually Dinesh had. Uh, had to go off to study, so he was not involved in that process. Um, and Jaina went to London, recorded the album, and really excited because the songs were produced so much better than the first album. And uh, before you knew, when we came back, uh, the Asian financial crisis had struck. 97, 98. Yeah, yeah that's right. And uh, that's when the record label had to pull out. So we never released that album. So we never got released? <laughs> never got released that album, right? So that's when we were like, oh my goodness. Uh, and that's when I went and joined 987 <laughs> full time. Uh, they pulled me in at that point. So, yeah, so I made that transition, you know, lost the band. No, hang on a second. Hang on a second. So, that London trip you guys made. Yeah. And to you, the, well, I mean, obviously you're in London, right? And yeah. The kind of producers you've got and, and, and the sound engineers that you've got there. Yeah working on your stuff is going to be like ace man it was great it was yeah. the stuff that you and know take you that never was got fucking released never got released so yeah. what happened to that album now i mean so, is it still collecting dust somewhere yeah so okay so, so the thing speak. about it was uh because it was stopped halfway we only had i think half the songs back from the producer because he only mixed half the songs right because he claimed he only got paid half the bill uh, because the record, you know, producer pulled, uh, sorry, the record, the record label, pulled, label out, pulled out, right? So uh, we only had, well, half, five songs back, I think at that point. Yeah. And I managed to get those five songs uh, and uh, basically just kept it and we couldn't. And do you don't want it. to release it on your own as an independent? Uh, well, it's, at this point, I don't think it's, you know, any point doing it because it's, you know, it's like, uh, what, in the 90s, it's still that 90s sound and, it's, hey. and it sounds like a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, come on. How can you say that? 90s sound. Look. Look, look, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be point blank again about this topic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I've said, I've talked about this all the time. 90s sound today, listen to Dua Lipa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Reminds obviously. you of the 90s? Obviously, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bruno Mars, why does he still survive? Yeah, or yeah. Not, throwback, a lot of throwbacks. Thriving, yeah. Yeah. thriving still, throwing back, right? Yeah. If, I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with 90s music. I think a lot of young people today also attest to the fact that Music was so much more fun in the eighties and the nineties. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and of course, I mean, yeah, I concur completely right, <laughs> as well. Together with you, yeah, yeah. And now you've got some nineties sound being released today. For all you know, it might just be quite a hit. Yeah, it might be. Uh, you know, it's, if it's, there's, uh, I guess, interest in it, you know, I, I, I would think about it. Yeah, I mean, if there's, no, there's no legalities yeah. governing this thing, I mean, why not? You and Jai, because yeah. you two guys did the work for it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. If if there's nothing that's stopping you in terms of ownership, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. You, I mean, think about this. You've got you've got your album. Let me just 
me, this is just top of the head. I'm yep, just talking yep. cock at the moment. Yeah? Right, but right, right. See yeah. what it makes sense. Yeah. You've got your new album you're releasing soon. Yeah. You have this dream of reaching, you know, the American charts, right? And then you've got five to six fucking songs. <laughs> worked from the vaults and, yeah worked and produced in freaking London yeah and it's not been released I mean yeah I know I know yeah it sounds like you know it's I an mean colloquially yeah. man it's like damn fucking Sayang right yeah it is it is it is uh, I've had a few people actually ask me even uh, you know to put it on on um, on you know the streaming platforms and stuff wow. and uh, I've thought about it obviously and but you know as an artist as well sometimes you're listening and say well you know my voice sounds like I'm like you know, adolescent kid. Well, then you, you know, take so that. You take the original <laughs> stuff that you've got. You got is your I don't, stuff. I don't have your. I mean, we have the only the the sound recordings. We don't you have, have the okay, actual. Yeah. Okay, record yeah. it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Record yeah. it again. Don't change the ninety sound. Yeah, but record it again. Right, right. You sing it again. Yeah, yeah. With John today. Yeah, yeah. John's vocals today, and do it again. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, your album's not released yet, so who knows. You have an additional five to six new songs added to whatever you're releasing. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's going to be quite refreshing because it seems to me now a lot more the 90s sound is coming back. It is, it is. People have throwbacks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So, yeah. you know, I don't see what's what's so bad about that, man. For all you know, you this is going to be some revival of some sort. Yeah, and yeah. you're going to take up, you're going to take advantage of it. I think it's going to be, a, I think it's a great idea. No, I, I'm, I, I actually think, I mean, since speaking to you, that just releasing it in, in its original form, you know, because it just was a point of our time, our lives, uh, you know, the second album of Kick, following the first album, uh, and and just remembering it for for what it was could be it as well, right? This is the last recordings from, of Kick, you know, from the '90s or whatever. I, yeah. you could just put it out anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah why not? Because now John Cars. Has is the whole total package, right? Compared to John Class, as you said in your own words, yeah, man, yeah. I sounded like a kid back then. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Today you're the whole package. I mean, think about this: you're a celebrity, you're a personality on radio, you're a celebrity, no doubt. Right. Yeah. And I'm happy for you, man. Thank you. I mean, we've known each other for a long time. I've got a lot of celebrity friends. I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not a celebrity at all. I'm like you guys. Well, people know you though. <laughs> Everybody thing. knows Chris. Even in school, people knew Chris Henson was. Oh boy. <laughs> this, this, this. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to go there. This show's not about this. This, this episode's not about me. It's about you. Uh, and you know, um, you've got you, you're the whole package now. You, you're a celebrity. You're on radio on air almost every day. You're a songwriter, as you said, and you are. You're a singer. You have albums put out there. You've got another album coming out. And then on top of that, there is also a line called John Class Suits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, what's the story of that, man? <laughs> uh, it's also a Sir Patrick's connection right there, yeah? Okay. Yeah, so, you know, um, Suresh Mulchan, right? You, oh, boy. You, you know yeah, Suresh, right? Suresh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so one day, I, w I walked... You see still his jumpy. Yeah, oh, he's still <laughs> exactly the same. Talk about someone that can talk forever. That guy can. He oh, goes yeah. on. He's, he can talk forever, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's an entertainer himself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So one day, I was looking for, for you know, sort of bespoke suits as well. Yeah. My wife said, why not go to Far East? You know, let's uh, check out the suits okay, over there okay and uh she remembers walking by this shop right it's around the second floor she says where this guy is always sitting out there is very friendly he's always saying hi <laughs> and says yeah i mean i think it's around this area so we started walking by and then she said i think it's this shop i remember seeing you know this guy but he was not there at that point so we just walked into the shop uh -huh. and i was inquiring about suits right so uh -huh. all of a sudden out of nowhere suresh walks in and says hey brother <laughs> i was like hey man you're from st pat's right <laughs> I said, yeah, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. So I said, I'm trying to make a suit. So I made a suit uh -huh. and uh, I liked what he did. And and then we started talking. Say, hey, you know, I've always wanted to do this and, uh, you know, make my own suits. Yeah. And, and, and have, I love that look and stuff like that. So we, we decided to uh, run a, do a business together. He, he knows the suit business. Yeah. I, I wanted to do a specific type of style. So mm -hmm. it became a John class suits sort of business with him. So he became a, so it, 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 he suggested the idea, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's got to be so rich. Yeah, it's got to be so rich. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's how John class suits came about. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I got to say, man, after that, to me, me is watching all that happening, right? Right, right. It's like, okay, now John's come to, in, come into his own. He's got John class suits now. <laughs> right. Right. And then, I saw snippets of your concert. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 2017. No, yeah, I mean, it, and, and, and this one got me. This one really got me. Um, 
Can we play that one, please, Kai? Oh, really? We've got a we've got a clip. Yeah, let's play this for a bit. And some say love is holding on. Yet some say letting go. Some say love is everything, and some say they don't know. Perhaps love is like the ocean. Of conflict full of change, like a fire when it's cold outside, or thunder when it rains. If I should live forever and all my dreams come true, the memories of love will be of you. Now this is the bit yeah. that I I felt was that really was the thing that we had. freaking silo, man. <laughs> this bit, believe it or not. When I'm walking out. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get me the wrong way, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That exit, man. That <laughs> exit was like star freaking quality exit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and 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 looking at you on that stage, there's one thing that hit me. I mean, John's arrived. Right. Wow. Okay. No, cool. really, because because I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I mean, I don't give a fuck. You know, I'll say things very yeah, boldly. Yeah, yeah. And, and I without, know that. <laughs> without wanting to be disrespectful. Right. Right. Yeah. When Kit came out, to me, Jane was nice. Yeah. 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 I didn't write it though, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say whatever you want. <laughs> I didn't like the song personally. <laughs> but, uh, I, and and okay, it was to me, it was great. He's got he's he's got a band. Um, his album's out, you know, yeah. or the band's album's out, you know. Um, great, Johnson Air, you're great, yeah. you know. So, um, but, didn't impress me. Yeah. Then, when I saw that, right. I went, fucking hell. Right, yeah. That's John right, arrived. Yeah. yeah. And that reminded me of that verve you had when I first saw you perform in school. Right, right. Okay, all those years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, that to me, that, got, that hit me then. Right, yeah. This one hit me when it came out. Right, yep. You know, and I went, what the fucking hell? There, there's so much in it. Right. There was so much in that. I mean, everything was so well, well planned, well organized. Look at your players, man. Yeah, they're all wearing John class suits, by the way. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> and then you guys were in a car. Oh, yeah, you saw that on the, the band. The carpool karaoke thing. Band in the car. Yeah, yeah the band in the car. Yeah. And, you know, they were also hyped. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you got a female drummer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and she's a real good drummer as well. Yeah, and, say, yeah. And, and, and your voice, you're right. The way you perform now, the way you sing, the way you perform, so much better mm. dude it was that was a bomb great thanks i appreciate that yeah. i actually played that like five times right well wow. prepping for the for today's episode you right know? right and i kept watching it i go wow now this guy's got it you know and the way you ended that performance man oh <laughs> cool no well done mate really thanks thanks and, to me to me to me you've arrived you know, right. you're there. And I'm really, I really hope that your new album is going to fly off the shelves. I mean, not as you can't say, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not literally flying off the shelves anymore these days. Everything's digital, right? Yeah. It's going to go on digital platforms, right, I suppose? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and you, well, first of all, thanks for saying that. And, and uh, everything you said is exactly how I felt as well, because I've always felt that whatever I did in the past was not really me that's and that's why i said that right it was mm -hmm. not really representative of, of me as an artist yeah i was just doing stuff because you know it was available to me it was stuff i was being asked to do 
And finally, I then sat down one day and said, okay, what am I really as an artist? Who yeah. am I, right? Yeah. What song should I be singing and, and who should I be putting out? And eventually, after all that, the concert was, I think, the first of mm -hmm. that sort of incarnation. Okay, this is going to be me, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, this is what I'm about. And right. the concert was the first thing. Yeah. And everything else since then has, has uh, started to- Okay, so as a later. performer, yeah. in terms of genre, you said pop music. Yeah. That's what your album is based on, commercial music, right? Yeah. But personally, man, you're, you- <laughs> But, uh, well, the John Denver song, I would consider pop music. Well, yeah, okay, this yeah. is pop music. But the way you presented it, right, right, it didn't feel like it didn't feel like a John Denver song. Right, right, okay, okay. Y you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, it was different. Yeah, you, I know it's a John Denver song, but yeah. it didn't come out and present it that way. Right. Um. So, what sort of what sort of genre do you really, really love? That. <laughs> You're going to say pop again, right? No, okay. So I guess- I you know, see you as a balladeer. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what my wife has been saying all these years, yeah. right? So I was, I'm a guy, I'm okay. I'm like Richard Marks, right? I love that sort of Richard Marks uh, when he first came out with all that guitar driven mm -hmm. type songs. Eventually he became Ballad Man. I'm not sure if you actually watched that concert where he actually started to only do ballads, which I hated. Uh, and but that's what people liked about you know Richard Marx right. you know right here waiting and mm. then now and forever I'll be your man yeah, so I really always yeah. consider those songs to be like sappy 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 right and my wife said no that's when you exactly what you said you know that's what you do best right yeah I think so and I always thought it was uncool so um, eventually I embraced it okay I said okay I think you know I've come to a certain age and I think maybe there's some truth in that. Uh, so when I did the concert, I realized that people, my friends, you know, from school who came to see it also told me that that particular segment, which was the love segment of the show, uh, was their favorite, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was like, okay, man, you know, maybe that's what I'm going to do. So when I released my, my, my first comeback sort of song for, for this era, it was an EP. I, I did a cover of a ballad, which I redid on my own. Uh, it was, uh, you know, made popular by Anne Murray. It was called uh, I Just Fall In Love Again. So I Fall In Love Again, yeah. yeah. So I didn't, because I realized there was no cover done by a guy. And I always, always loved that song. No cover done by a guy. Really? Yeah. So, that, uh, you know, recently I did that cover. Mm -hmm. And when I played it on radio, got to play it on radio. Uh, <laughs> finally, uh, someone texted me and said, hey, you know, I've always wondered why there was no, no guys guy singing who singing that song. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard it on air, I went to look for it in Spotify and I found out it was you. Right, I you know shazammed it. I was like, oh wow, you like it? So yeah, you know, I thought it's great. In in exactly what I've always wanted, you know, was having a guy sing that you know song. Which, which, which is why I was looking so puzzled. Right, because when you said no guys done it before, and I went, really? I thought I heard it before. Right, okay, so, so you might have heard that you. one. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so take a listen if you can. Uh, I will. I will. <laughs> I, I mean, I heard it before. Right, right, right. So when you brought this up, because when I heard it. It was on radio. Right, okay. So you must, must have been listening. But to I didn't know who it was. Right, right, yeah. So now I know it's you. Yeah, it's me, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, the, the Carpenters did it, you know, and then Anne Murray did it. Yeah, Carpenters uh, did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, well, Anne Murray made it big. Yeah, hers was the, was the big one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I cried a tear, I wiped it dry. Was no, 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 that, that was You Needed Me. Oh, that's You that's Needed Me. This dreaming, one is what? man, I must be dreaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, really okay. Dreaming, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I get yeah. confused with my old age. No. Oh, it's Emma Raves, basically. <laughs> One song sounds like the other, but all great songs, yeah. So when you had that concert, what was your objective, man? Well, I've always, okay, I've done shows, mm. you know, and I've done like small shows and I've done, uh, I do a lot of private shows and I wanted to kind of put a marker down as, okay, this is me being artist, doing the songs I want to do in my own style and own way, right? So, um, yeah, my wife, that's what we do. Actually, we put out shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she said, let's, let's do one. And, uh, so we gave it a shot. So, okay. First question was who would come, right? Who the hell would come? Because I've been known all this while as a, as a DJ, uh, I've not done music in a long time, you know, yeah. like in, in, in the public. So who would come? Uh, so we had a recital studio at, um, at, uh, what was that? Uh, Esplanade. So right. it's a nice 200 seater. I said, okay, let's try this out. And we sold out, so that's you know that was that was encouraging. And I right after that concert, we actually had planned a few more, and then you know COVID hit, and then everything you know s stood still for a while. So, uh. so then I started working my album, and then okay, so you know uh, finally done with that, and it's gonna be yeah, I've seen I've seen guys like you know friends like you, and then I know Romito had one as well. Yeah, 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 Mendoza. 
And I and I did ask myself this question. Well, ballsy move, man. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I would have thought tough. the same. Like you know, if if I mean, I would never do it. Like, you know, I mean, who the hell will come listen? To me? Exactly. Who the hell? Will exactly. Come to me? Right. Who the you, hell will come listen? Everybody will to me? ask that question. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. You yeah. know, so everybody. I'm sure. I I think. You know, if you watch the Elvis film as well, right? Elvis was saying the same thing, man. <laughs> no, I mean, he was saying the same thing. Who would want to listen no, no. to me do this? Mr. Class, Mr. Class, let me just tell you this, man. If it were me, it's, it would bomb. No, we cannot say <laughs> no that. No one's going to turn No, 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 no. I'm telling you, on. if you no, believe in man. yourself, that's how, what, that's, it starts with that first. Then eventually people will see that uh, belief and it will come. Man. But when I see you guys do stuff like that and I go, oh, wow. I wish to go. You see, you know, you see but, what you're doing right now, you know, in this podcast, in this you're putting yourself out there, right? And then the next thing leads to the next thing. And you've got to start putting yourself out there. That's all I'm saying, right? I, I really don't know, man. To me, it's like, it's so ballsy to do this. I mean, you're going to go out there and sell tickets. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, that, that oh, stuff because man. it's validation of yourself. And then if yeah, yeah. And then you you fear that your, your biggest fears will come true when no one buys tickets, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a tough thing. So did everything work out the way... Did it work out the way you you wanted it to work out? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, because you know the, the reason why I do it is because I feel good doing it, right? I feel yeah, yeah. like I am living my my purpose, right? Yeah. That's the only reason why I'm still doing it. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. It's because I feel I need to do this, yeah. otherwise I cannot die. <laughs> really, I cannot die. Really, I cannot die. That's exactly what I'm doing. And that's why what drives me to do it. At yeah. this age, really, why would I even want? I, I've got a great job in radio. Pays me well, comfortable, right? Why am I still, you know, have this urge to want to go and write my own music, do this? Because it takes up a lot of time uh, on top of what I'm doing in radio. It is, and and, and it causes- It's an itch you got to scratch. It, absolutely, right? Yeah. So I, I know that it's a, there's a purpose for me to do it. Yeah. It's not just vanity. It is something I have to have do. Have to do, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know what you mean, man. Just like what you're doing right here as well, I'm sure. I mean, I've, Oh, this I've is seen something some... I had to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm doing it. Yeah, you know, and, I... and kudos <laughs> to that. I, I, as I said, just like you've been looking at what I've been doing, I've been looking at what you've been doing as well. <laughs> not really. And I, I'm so glad that you're actually doing this because I knew you've been wanting to do this for a long time. Yeah. You finally sat down and said, okay, heck it, yeah. I'm going to do it, right? Yeah. And that's what how everything starts when someone says, heck it, Let's just get do this it. shit done. Yeah. yeah. And then you see, you know, the magic appear. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah. Where I'm sitting right now yeah. in this space. Yeah. This is my dream. Absolutely. I know. One that. of a few. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so knock it down one at a time until you yeah. can say, well, I've done it all now. I Thank can you. I appreciate that. Man. No, so man. Is that would, would that be the same advice you would give to anyone aspiring in music? Absolutely. I've been surviving on music for most of my life, doing music, mm -hmm. writing songs for TV shows, for kids shows, uh, stuff that I love doing. And in Singapore as, as well, I've supported my family doing music and not singing in clubs or anything like that. You know, not that people think, okay, to earn money, you've got to go out there and sing. You don't have to just do that. As a singer songwriter, you can do yeah. so many other, and get so many things done. Like what? I said songwriting, uh, performance, of course. Said, okay, I do. you write songs, you get commissioned to write songs. Yeah. But people need to know who you are. Yeah, but you've got to put yourself out there first, right? Yeah, so, okay. you know, so it goes back to that. So, yeah. Put yourself out there. Put yourself out. You first make that first step. Right. And then, once you make that first step, people will start to see it. People like it. Then mm. you eventually get spread. The news will spread. And eventually, people know. And then they'll come to you. And then one job you do will lead you to the next job, next thing, next thing, next thing. Next so, thing. so I, I'm curious, man. Now that you're talking about this and you say that, I've been feeding my family with music. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, that's how I've been earning my living. Um, and of course, uh, the hungry years as Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. 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 As Mickey Mouse. As, mas as, as mascot. any mascot, you, you get into a costume and get paid for stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and then you, you, you still continue to write your songs. You get commissioned eventually. But be outside of radio, let's yeah. say, for example, hypothetically, yeah. John Class is not on air. Yeah. But he's a music composer, writer, yeah, musician, performer. Yeah. Would you still be able, do you think, to feed your family, to have fed your family without yeah, being so, in on radio? So I was not in radio for 15 years. Yeah, that, that, I know. That's why I remember that gap, the 15 yeah, year 15 gap. Yeah, 15 year gap, right? Yeah. What happened during that period? Could you yeah, could, so could you get by? So see, the thing about it, I've always had one single mindset. And it was never to earn money, right? So money was not my my concern. 
because I, I guess I had this thing since I was young that I was always going to be doing music. I was always going to be successful doing it and money would not be a problem because everything will follow if I did it right, right? So that was, I guess, naive thinking, if you want to call it now. Now in hindsight, I'm thinking about like, this crazy guy, right? <laughs> it's a crazy guy thinking that way, you know, because I had all the confidence yeah. in the world that I'll be able to succeed and, and do that, right? right. Uh, so to some extent, yes, I was successful with Kick and that helped because I had that name with Kick. Mm -hmm. And because of Kick, I guess it was easier for me to get into 987 because I already had that sort of background yep, where yep. people knew me. So I got into 987. Uh, and then I did what I did in 97. And then eventually I left after two years. And uh, after that, it was um, surprisingly so. I never had to look for a job for 10 years at least. People just kept coming to me for this or that and this and that. I was freelancing li literally for, mm -hmm. for, for a long time. People ask you, could you do this? Could you do that? And I realized just by doing radio, I could do so many things. I could script, I could produce, I could, you know, all that stuff because I was doing that in radio as well. Right, right. right. So I realized I could do so many things. I could write songs. I could write, uh, you know, theme songs. I could do children's shows. I, I once had a job. Someone asked me, can you write uh, f uh, 30 songs in 30 days, literally for a kid's show because they want a tight, very tight schedule. Right. And he said, well, we, we can pay you the money, uh, but you need to deliver, right? So I was like, obviously I'm going to take the money. And I just said, yes, not knowing if I could do it. I was like, okay, man, one song. Uh, and it was, I had to do three songs in a day because there was like, Oh boy, this. Yeah, so, but it was short songs, right? Like yeah. two minute songs each. Still, still is like my brain could be sweating and hurting, man. Yeah, so, but wow. then because I had that timeline, yeah. I disciplined myself to make sure I delivered the hooks and all that yeah, stuff of course, for, yeah. for, for kids to sing, right? Yeah. And I, I did it. And yeah. it's because you're telling, I've got to do it. Don't think about how, yeah. just do it, right? It has to be done. It has to be it done. It has to be done. Yeah. I did it. And uh, and because I did that, then I got all, a lot more offers coming in because oh. oh, John can deliver uh, this, the, the, the goods at this particular short short notice as well. Yeah. 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 So you showed that you could deliver. But net net of it all, to, to answer my own question, advice to young musicians out there that, yeah, like John, you can still feed your family, feed yourself, Put yourself out there, right? But you got to have the talent well, and the drive okay. to deliver. Okay, so let me give you another example, all right? Yeah. Talent is, what is talent as well? Is one man's talent or one man's, uh, you are good and is another man's, I don't think you're great, right? Yeah. And it's basically what you think of yourself, right? Right. That's the most important. Look at Madonna. I say, Madonna, if she entered a singing competition, she'd never win, <laughs> right? Never win. She doesn't have a voice, yeah. you know, a good yeah. voice. She's not Mariah Carey. She's not Whitney Houston, right? She's not a diva diva. She's not a, a great singer. Let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah. The rest of them, they're divas because they know they, they can sing well, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so Madonna had to put in a lot more work in terms of finding ways to get herself out there, get yeah. people talking about her, her. Branding, her personality. Finding the right songs. Yeah, yeah. all that stuff, right? But yeah. her determination is what got her to yeah. being bigger than some of these Mariah Carey's and Whitney Houston's yeah. because Madonna is now like the queen, right? Yeah. And why? It's because she knew how to use mm -hmm. whatever, she, that determination, I think, in the end, is just knowing I want to get there, how I get there, I don't care, but- Don't give up, don't Don't quit. give up, I'm just going to go. Just like when I was given that song, I took it first, there were songs to do, I took it first, don't think, Let's just do, I know I'm going to get it done. Just tell myself I'm going to get it done and I'm going to get it done. And eventually it got done. And because of that, more things were, came to me, right? So, so it is about the old school motto, isn't it? Potes Quivolt, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. For those of you who don't know what Potes Quivolt <laughs> means, uh, other than sounding like protest and revolt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was that. <laughs> protest and revolt, yes, that's cool. <laughs> Potes Quivolt is a St. Patrick's School motto. We are very proud. Old boys at the school. Absolutely, man. Uh, and Potesco revolt means he who wills can. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I think that motto of ours, man, look at our friends. Yeah. Has driven us. Yep. It was a good, damn good foundation for all of us. It's driven us to really be determined and resilient. Yeah. And, 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 and what you got to do means you got to do, you know, what you have to do, you got to do. Yeah. What man's got to do, you got to do. Yeah. You know, we don't quit in that. Yeah. And, and as long as you tell yourself that. So it's not no about talent, what, huh? It's not. It's really <laughs> in the end, right? It's what you make of yourself. And uh, if you think that's what's going to happen, there's no two ways about it. I'm going to make it happen. It will happen. I'm <laughs> telling you at 50 plus years now, 
I'm still dreaming see, to do this. See, this, this I, yeah, yeah, it has this to. Joker, has, this joker, listen, you're just that. like you're just like everyone else. Don't want to say how old you are. I, tell I you. already said fifty plus, man. Yeah, it's no, like already no, bad no, enough. Fuck that. Okay, you you are, I, wait ninety seven years. Exact same year. Same yeah, year yeah, as me. Yeah, yeah, We're the same freaking age, dude. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're fifty four this year. Okay, let's say it. Yeah, yeah. I, I forget. <laughs> Once fifty came, I said I don't even want to know how you know how old uh, I am. We are. Yeah, we are young senior, man. Yeah, we are seniors. Yeah, absolutely, right? I don't know, man. Are we getting a bus, senior citizens bus pass next, next year? Next year, next year, yeah. And we can apparently go to the movies and pay half price on weekdays. Oh, or something, I do that man. now. Oh, what? How do you do that? Yeah, nearby, man. Nearby. You go down to the hub nearby. And you get and And you price. go for the movies? Uh, dude. No, you, you can only get it at 55, right? No, no, this one, 50. Huh, really? <laughs> wow, okay. You have to wait five years then. Just to let you know, just to let you know. I mean, if you ever want to pay half price for your movie tickets. I can do it now already. Wow. <laughs> you can do okay, it now. Okay, man. It's cool. <laughs> um, okay. So don't give up. It's, it's you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the, the self-doubt that stops a lot of people from doing it, right? Yeah. It, it is, is self-doubt. Is. Yeah. What do you think of music today, man? What do I think of music today? I think music is good you know if you think it's good <laughs> no no really really i, I do i do think that <laughs> don't do think be that. politically correct yeah i am not i'm not uh you know i, I know a lot of people say that and in, in uh, music from the 80s was great and i think the only reason was because you know we grew up in that era <laughs> and we had a lot of memories so attached we're being to it. biased <laughs> yeah, in, in some ways, I think everybody says that, right? The people in the 50s grew up, the 50s, great music there as well. Uh, 50s music, no one can beat that. Rock and roll, I agree, rock and roll is great. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is, this is debatable here, because why? Okay. Let me, let's, let's, okay, let's, yeah, sure. Look at this in proper context, yeah? Right, yeah. The 50s, people who rocked, who rocked the 50s, yeah? They have every reason to say that was the best uh, era, simply because, simply because the king of rock and roll brought rock and roll to yeah. the world, yeah. yeah. Then the Beatles came along. Then yeah. you had the sixties, right? Yeah. And then of course those baby boomers who say the seventies were the best because why? And they were not wrong either. Yeah, not but wrong you either. have to see if you take a look at those times, those time periods, man, and link that popular culture to what happened in history. Right. right? Yeah. So, so in terms of music, we know that the fifties and sixties, Motown also happened then. Yeah. 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 Yep. The Beatles came around. Then there was the British explosion at that time yep. as well because of the Beatles. Beatles yeah. Yeah. And and then after that, you've had the Vietnam War. All right. And then yep. then you see the music became a little different. Yeah. Uh, the hippie generation, hippie generation came about. Bob right? Dylan. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Yeah. Um. Um. And then after that, the eighties. Right. In the eighties, don't forget the wall came down. There was a Cold War. Yeah. And it reached the stage where Gorbachev came in and we had Glasnost. Yeah, and then the wall right. came wow. down, yeah. Reagan was around. Yeah. Then we had the Iron Lady Thatcher yeah. and we had the British explosion again. Yeah, and it's because of Thatcher's, Thatcher's uh, you know, sort yeah, because of she wanted, she wanted, she's very, uh, um, she's, she's all about meritocracy, but she's concerned, right? Just yeah. like us in Singapore, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and, you go out there and you, and you, and you work for a living and you build something and, and music came up. Yeah. Right, and then we had a lot of Brit music, like you said, Duran Duran. Don't forget Depeche Mode, yeah, Spandau great. Ballet. Yeah. Of course, we would say, "Hey, music was better then." Yeah, yeah because look at how things evolved. We, we, uh, 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 digital actually started then because yeah. there was so much electronic so, music, electronic basically. music, yeah. synth sounds. Yeah. You know, it, Thompson Twins, Depeche Mode, all using synthesizers, yeah. Kaja yeah. Goo Goo. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I mean, look at what happened then. Right. And yeah. so, of course, we will say, but today. Yeah. <laughs> since the millennium turned. Yeah. I mean, hell, uh, what was it? Black Eyed Peas. Okay. They all use garage band to write their songs. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Fine. What else? <laughs> well, there are a lot of, uh, as I said, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say iconic types, you know, sort of bands. Yeah, I would agree with that, right? There, there's, there's the few, okay, the Coldplay's, the uh, U2's, U2's okay, okay. as well. As on, on, come on, U2, U2. In the 80s as well, uh, yeah, yeah, the 80s, yeah. Coldplay, I agree. Yeah. Coldplay, I agree. And what's that guy, Dave Grohl? What band was he? Uh, um, yeah. Oh, jeez, what's it called? Shucks, damn it, damn. <laughs> oh, where, oh, where can my baby be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam, Pearl Pearl Jam. Jam. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Pearl, yeah. There are no more anyway. Pro yeah. Jam, they, I mean, they, they became, you know, quite a household name, right? But they, I mean, were, they were going back to, the, you know, the roots of, of exactly. real music, Look right? At, yeah. 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 And yeah. It, it, even, even, uh, even Maroon 5. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. But now, in, and then now my, my boy, my boy is nuts over Kanye. 
<laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. What do you teach him, man? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I've gone wrong. Really. And, he, and he's like, I'm, I'm going to be Kanye you this, Kanye you <laughs> oh, that. Really? If he man. comes to Singapore, I'm gonna be, he's going to drop his album soon. I say, he's, no, he's not. He's going to fool you guys again. <laughs> and he did for a day. But eventually he did that. And yes, I know he's a bit of a nutter. But 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 then why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I told Aliyah this. Uh, I, 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 I've... I've said in that episode. So since we're talking, I'll say it again. Um, yeah, he said, he's bigger than Elvis. <sighs> no way. Oh, can you imagine telling me in my house? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. No way, no way. <laughs> and well, and you know, I mean, look at what's, what are they producing today, man? You got hip hop and this hip hop and Taylor Swift. <laughs> I actually like Taylor Swift. Um, have you seen her? Con have you watched her concert? Yeah, yeah I, it is uh, epic. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, it's, she's a great performer, great like, songwriter, I think, as well. But, uh, but, yeah, but look at the whole package, and you think, and you think back, you think back, Janet Jackson. Yeah, you think back, uh, Whitney Houston. Right, you think back, these people. Yeah, and you and okay, let's let's be fair. In, forget about genders, um, Prince. Yeah, you know, you totally different sort of, uh, you know, thing. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, see, the thing about it, because my daughter is a huge fan of Taylor Swift, oh right? Boy. So I often ask her as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, what what do you see? And, and, and Taylor Swift is not one of those flash in the pan type uh, artists as well. She's actually one of the more pure singers. I'm not saying she's not good. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that compared to yeah, how, much, of course, of course. how much impact there has yeah, been yeah. By, from, by artists on uh, globally, Yeah. right? I mean, you can't compare Taylor Swift to Queen. Yeah, I mean, they're different artists, but I think what's the difference right now, because yeah. I've had this conversation as well with my, my daughters, uh, and it's social media, right? That's made a difference and made them bigger than they would have been if not for so social media. Because yeah. on the music alone, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. They're not Prince, they're not Queen, they're not ABBA even. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, which gives you something that a lot of artists can't, right? Yeah, these, yeah. these special sort of artists. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and social media has a lot to do, knowing how to manipulate social media. In fact, I'm doing a study right now because I'm, I'm, I'm at this stage of my sort of music uh, uh, sort of career where I've just released, I'm going to release my album and I've got to learn how to do everything in the modern world. Yeah, yeah. Social media has a lot to do with it. So I'm actually taking some sort of lessons uh, with this, this guy who actually initially managed Taylor Swift. Wow. His name is Rick Barker, right? And uh, he did, he talks about how when he first started with Taylor Swift, they were ground zero. Uh, first, they really um, sort of looked at social media and the only thing they had at that point was MySpace. MySpace and then eventually grew into, you know, Facebook and all the other stuff, right? So he, he talks about everything to do with social media. And I agree with that as well. When, when social media first came out, also as an artist, uh, I, you know, we now can bypass record labels, can bypass everyone else who yeah. were the gatekeepers to your music yeah. and say, I can go directly to my audience, right? Yeah. So now let's find out how I do that. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways Spotify gives you that chance, playlisting and all that mm -hmm. stuff. There's a lot to learn, um, which has made a difference because now you're impacting people's lives, not just by the music, but as a person as well, right. on the little things that you can sort of uh, connect with your audience about the lyrics that you write, yep. uh, about your experiences in your personal life. And right. they can, you know, and that's the, the, the thing, the dynamic has changed. It's not just about music anymore. And it's not about what the tabloids write about you anymore. It's not you can write about yourself you, and yeah. connect directly with the audience, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, so what you're saying is today, the artist is seen for their for their authenticity. Yeah. So when I asked my daughter, why do you like Taylor, Taylor Swift? Music's one, but it's all the other things that make Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift personally in her life. Wow. I tell yeah. You. That they connect with the, the love stories, how she breaks up with her boyfriend. She feels this pain and all these uh, kids or girls or, or fans growing up with that same pain relate to her and then they reach out and you know, all that stuff. But you're an ex Jenner, man. Now that you've learned this, right? And then as an artist, yeah. if you're going to use social media for this purpose, would you be willing to bear your soul and your heart, you know, mm. and your personal private life on social media? Well, that's the thing. So there's a line you have to draw, obviously, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a damn fine line. So I'm trying it? to figure out that right now, exactly <laughs> what, how, and all that stuff. 
I'm in the process right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. because you know, for 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 a lot of guys like us, and especially those older than us, you yeah. know, we we go, how much do we want to really put out there? Yeah, yeah. You know, if we put too much of ourselves out there, we it, it makes us vulnerable as well. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then you start wondering, like, and then there'll be those who would say, of course, there'll be the older audience that will say. Why are you doing this, man? Why are you telling everybody yeah, about your, yeah, you know, your yeah. issues and blah, blah, blah. And then when you talk about issues, then you also share happy stuff. People are also glad to see it, you know. And, and some not so. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, true. Yeah. The cynics lah. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, um, I I I I really hope I wish you the best. Thanks, yeah. You know, for your for your new album. Uh, and your exploration into this space now. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the thing that's interesting. And that's why I'm, I'm not writing off, you know, the, the yeah. new music because obviously, you know, people like it and I've just got to accept it, embrace it and see why is it that people are interacting and with the music and how they're doing it these days, you know, and, you know, try and try to move forward with that, right? Rather than just... Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, 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 you know, as I, as, as I said, you know, I really hope your dream comes true. That, you know, really, you 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 get what you want in the next thirty plus years, man. I'm, I'm, saying, ho I'm hoping to get it in the next couple of years, and then enjoy it for the rest <laughs> the next thirty years. If not only happen at an eighty something. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. we're gonna do something right now. We can okay. do something. Um, All right. <clears throat> I've got a you know I've got John Class here. All right. I did this with Alia, and I was nervous as shit. Okay. Because you know this is not my this is not my this is not really my job. Something um, that you can do. I, I suppose. And I was nervous as shit when I sang it for her. Yeah, but I think it, I think it turned out okay. okay. Um, but so if I'm, when I have John class in the studio, I have to sing. All right. Yeah. With John Let's do Klaas. this. <laughs> so, so this is going to be a cheeky song. <laughs> Why cheeky? Because it's a song that's going to be sung by two Eurasian boys <laughs> from St. Patrick's school. From St. Pat's. <laughs> knowing fully well that their wives be watching the show. <laughs> and, and my wife knows how many uh, girlfriends I've had and she's had more boyfriends than I have. So, you know, she's not going to judge me. Yeah. Well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I'll be in a doghouse after this. <laughs> we'll uh, find out. <laughs> You're always uh, welcome to my place. You know? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. I'll take you up on that. Just the street away. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, um, th this is a song to all the girls I loved before. Eh? Yeah. And, okay. <laughs> and and I, I since you were the classy guy and Julio, Julio, he, I get to Julio, be Julio. Okay. Julio is a classy guy, so you do Julio. All right. And I'll do the gruffy guy. All right, man. Because I mean, look at me, I'm the gruffy guy. You're Willie. Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <Okay>. Willie. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of girls says, hey, hello, Willie. Hey, Willie. Oh, look at that. Willie. <laughs> there goes his Willie. Okay. Oh, I love that Willie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Kai, whenever you're ready, man, just play the song. All right. All right, Willie. To all the girls I've loved before. How many again? A lot. We travel in and out my door. Revolver. And I'm glad they came along. I'm sure. And dedicate the song right. to all the girls I loved before. <laughs> to all the girls I once caressed. Rabba rabba. <laughs> and may I say I'd held the best. For helping me to grow I'll bet I owe a lot I know To all the girls I loved before The winds change are always blowing And every time I try to stay The winds of change continue blowing Carry me away Willie To all the girls who shared my life Who now are someone else's wife Ignorance is bliss I'm glad they <laughs> came along I dedicate the song To all the girls I've loved before I'm sure you can't remember them all, yeah? To all the girls who cared for me Who 
filled my nights with ecstasy. Hell yeah. Uh, they stay within my heart. I'll always be a part of all the girls I've loved before. The, the winds of change are always blowing. And, and every, every time, time I try to stay. Winds of change continue blowing And the ages carry me away To all the girls we've loved before Who traveled in and out our doors We're glad you came along we dedicate the song to all the girls we loved before. To all the girls we've loved before. That's right. We traveled in and out outdoors. But we're glad they came along. We dedicate the song to all the girls we loved. Mr. John Cass. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching uh, this episode with uh, the classy dude, John Class. This is Chris Hansen. You've been watching the Chris Hansen Conversation, of course. And we are one more episode less. Next week, <laughs> Friday, is going to be the season finale. It's going to be a great one. Make sure you tune in, okay? Uh, we'll see you again sometime. We hope you had, you've had fun with that song. And wives... Don't get angry, boss. <laughs> All right. See ya. See you guys. Bye-bye. Mm.